Bionicle Adventures is the second book series based in the Bionicle universe. It covers the events that occurred in the storyline's 2004–2005 story arc. It is preceded by the Bionicle Chronicles series and followed by the Bionicle Legends series, though as Adventures is almost exclusively told in flashbacks, it takes place a thousand years before either one. After Makuta's defeat at the end of Bionicle Chronicles, the Taraga elders are telling the tale of how the great spirit Mata Nui entered his endless sleep. Sources The main events of the Adventures story arc are told in The Ten Bionicle Adventures books which include the movie novelizations. Issues 16–27 of the Bionicle comic book, which was distributed to LEGO Club members and later published online at Bionicle.com Two direct-to-video movies, Bionicle 2, Legends of Metru Nui and Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows The following sources provide background information and tell side stories taking place during Bionicle adventures A set of six mini-CDs distributed with Toa Metru toy sets, showing the first events of adventures the Bionicle, Metru Nui City Guide, written as a travel guide to the city during the Morbuzik attacks. The Bionicle, Rahi Beast's Guide, written from the perspective of the Rahaga during the Visarak invasion. The Bionicle Encyclopedia, which has entries covering the entire saga at the time of its publication just prior to the conclusion of adventures. It also includes a short story relating Nidhiki's origins. A series of online animations featuring a side story that occurred during the Visarak invasion, published here at Bionicle.com. A video game, Bionicle, Maze of Shadows, which is adaptation of the Bionicle Adventures book of the same name. <laughs> Plot summary 2004. As the Matoran of the island of Mata Nui prepare to return to their ancient home of Metru Nui, Taraga Varkama begins to tell the tales of its fall a thousand years ago. Topic: Mystery of Metru Nui. Sources: Bionicle Adventures Number no. One, Legends of Metru Nui Movie, Comic Number no. Sixteen. The city of Metru Nui, long peaceful under the reign of Taraga Dume, was under attack. For the past month, a vicious plant called the Morbuzik had been terrorizing the edges of town, destroying buildings and making Matoran vanish without a trace. The enforcers of order, the Vaki, could do little to stop the spread of the Morbuzik, and the Toa who guarded the city had gone on missions from which they never returned. Only Toa Lakan was left, and when he saw two dark hunters in the city, a familiar being named Nidiki and his partner Kreka, he became extremely worried. Lakan decided to break into the Great Temple and steal six Toa stones, which he charged with his own Toa power. He then set about delivering the stones to Matoran that he had carefully chosen, teacher Nokama, transport driver Mato, carver Onewa, archivist Fenua, and scholar Nuju. He had just delivered the last stone to the final Matoran, a mask maker named Varkama, when the Dark Hunters caught up with him. In order to save Varkama from the hunter's attack, Lakan allowed himself to be captured, but not before telling the TA Matoran to save the heart of Metru Nui". Each of the Matoran brought their Toa stone and met each other at the Great Temple. Placing the stones in the Suva Shrine, the stones activated and transformed the six into new Toa Metru. As the Toa armed themselves with weapons from the Suva's arsenal, they wondered what to do next. The answer came as Varkama received a vision, the keys to the Morbuzik's defeat laid in the great Kanoka discs, relics that were long said to have immense power, but their locations were only known to six Matoran, Varkama's mentor Nuri, Nokama's student Visola, Mato's rival Orkam, Onewa's rival Akmu, Fenua's co-worker Tehuti, and Nuju's occasional assistant Eri. Not everyone completely trusted Varkama's vision. Mato was particularly frustrated at following what he considered the delusions of a fire spitter, 
but with nothing else to go on they decided to track the Matoran down. Unfortunately, the search was harder than anticipated. For one thing, the robotic Vaki were programmed to contain any disturbances to the city's order, and six unidentified Toa running around certainly qualified, but there was no time to go to Taraga Doom to have him change their orders. More than that, each of the six Matoran had gone missing recently and had to be found first. Following their respective trails, the Toa found that each of the Matoran had a motive to keep the great disc they found for personal gain. Worse, one of them was working with the Dark Hunters and had helped lead the others into traps. The Matoran were soon found and freed, and when they learned that the great discs could save the city, they willingly gave up any claims to them, but that still left the matter of the traitor among them. Topic. Trial by fire Sources, Bionicle Adventures No. 2, Comics Hash 17–18 In searching for the discs, the Toa split up into teams of two, accompanied by their two respective Matoran. No Kama and Mato got along pretty well, and retrieved their great discs from a sea monster's mouth and a soon-to-implode force sphere, respectively. Varkama, however, was stuck with the abrasive Onewa, but they pulled together to get their discs from a fire pit and the top of a tall, precariously balanced statue. Nuju and Fenua also weren't a good match, as their home districts have had a long standing rivalry, but they worked together to get their discs. Nuju's frozen at the top of a knowledge tower, and Fenua's hidden among the artifacts in the archives. Eventually, the Toa Metru were able to rescue the Matoran, find the Great Discs, and find and destroy the King Root of the Morbuzik, putting an end to its reign of terror and leaving absolutely nothing of the plant, except for the damage it had caused. The battle over, with Great Discs still intact, the Toa Metru began to make their way to the Colosseum to present themselves to Taraga Doom. But the Morbuzik was just the first of the many enemies the Toa Metru would have to face. The Darkness Below Source, Bionicle Adventures No. 3 The Toa Metru were warned about a potentially dangerous protodermis leak in the ONU Metru archives, and, led by Fenua, made their way into a dark sub-basement of the archives. There, a potentially simple mission turned into a near debacle as the Toa Metru faced what appeared to be a wild Rakshi, then each other. It was the doing of Kraka, a female Rahi with the dreadful power of shapeshifting into anyone she met, assuming their powers when she did. Caught off guard, the Toa Metru, never sure if they were all really the Toa Metru, finally managed to get together, with Kraka. There, after another fierce battle, the Toa Metru barely defeated the Rahi, but since Varkama allowed her to escape, she would return. Legends of Metru Nui Sources, Legends of Metru Nui Movie and its Novelization Adventures No. 4, Comics Hash 19-21 The Toa Metru, fully confident in their victory over the Morbazark, arrived at the Colosseum to present themselves to Taraga Doom and the Matoran population as the new defenders of Metru Nui. However, instead of being praised them as the Toa, they were challenged by Taraga Doom to cross the Colosseum's field. The Toa Metru accepted, but the shape-changing power of the Colosseum's field was too much for the six exhausted and novice heroes, and so they failed. Taraga Doom then denounced them as imposter Toa and ordered the Vaki to arrest them. A vortex appeared in the middle of the field and Onewa, Nuju, and Fenua were sucked in. No Kama and Mato were able to anchor themselves by digging their tools into the ground, with the former also grabbing Varkama who then shot a series of discs at the base of a towering statue. It collapsed, crushing the advancing Vaki and deactivating the vortex. The three Toa then fled the Colosseum and escaped into a chute. For info on the rest of the plot, see Legends of Metru Nui. A small side note, but one that had a major impact on later happenings, is contained in this one line from the Makuta, "'Join me and my brothers'". 
As it turned out, all Toa knew of the Brotherhood of Makuta, a powerful organization that was formed by the great spirit Mata Nui to serve and protect the Matoran, but they thought that it was a good organization. Makuta revealed in the movie that his brotherhood was, in fact, evil. Voyage of Fear Sources, Bionicle Adventures No. 5 The Toa Metru, with six stasis pods, sought a new home for the Matoran. Their journey past the Great Barrier met with unexpected difficulties, they fight surviving Vaki, and are captured by gigantic and deadly marine Rahi, but are captured by the dreadful and hated Krali drones, Vaki predecessors expelled from the city. The Toa Metru are taken the cave home of a strange Onu Matoran, known by Fenua as an old friend named Mavra, who is an ally of both the Rahi and Krali. After a bizarre tale by Fenua about the last time he saw Mavra and the gigantic marine Rahi, a pitched battle occurred between Mavra, the Toa Metru, Vaki, and Krali, in which the Krali was destroyed and Mavra presumably killed. The Toa Metru managed to escape the Vaki and Rahi, but Onewa was forced to seal the passageway back to Metru Nui. However, they completed their journey to a new island, which they named Mata Nui. A side note to this quest is the strange fate of the traitor named Arkmu. He was one of the first six Matoran taken to Mata Nui, but his stasis pod was dislodged from the Vaki transport and sank to the bottom, somewhere between Metru Nui and Mata Nui. He was the only Matoran not awakened from his slumber by the Toa Metru, he was awakened by the evil Makuta, who informed him of all the stories of Metru Nui which he had forgotten while in his coma. Somehow, he managed to land on Mata Nui and began selling kolhi balls infected by Makuta. <laughs> Maze of Shadows Sources, Bionicle Adventures No. 6, Maze of Shadows video game with the first five stasis capsules safely on the island of Mata Nui, and locations chosen for future villages, the Toa Metru began their quest to find a new route back to the ruins of Metru Nui. Unable to return the way they came, they head through a system of tunnels deep under the island, which are in fact a lair of the Makuta. They encountered many more strange, and frightened, Rahi, as well as a few more new enemies, the horrible hybrid Rahi known as the Rahi Nui, a being made entirely out of energized protodermis, and the Karzani, the sentient predecessor of the Morbuzik. Also, there was a strange Kranakrata hybrid creature, which warned the Toa Metru of a new danger, Visorak. Plot summary 2005. <inaudible> <inaudible> Web of the Visorak Sources, Bionicle Adventures No. 7, Web of Shadows Movie Having successfully found a new route back to their island home of Metru Nui, Varkama, now driven, and incredibly hard on both himself and others, led the others in the advance back to the ruined city. It did not take long to see that something had gone horribly wrong, the entire city was covered in fog, and green webbing ran all over the place. Although the Toa Metru did not know it at the time, the webbing and probably the fog was produced by a horde of highly intelligent, spider-like creatures named Visorak. As the Visorak closed in, Varkama rashly strode out to the Colosseum, with the others somewhat lagging behind, and the group was promptly ambushed by the Visorak. They were brought to the Colosseum to be hung in webs and die. Visorak leader Sidorak wanted to simply kill them, and he would have except for the fact that Rudaka, viceroy of the Visorak, persuaded Sidorak to mutate them and then let them fall to their deaths. But as they fell, they were rescued. A group of strange creatures, small, squat, and having the faces of Rakshi, saved the Toa Metru from their falls. When the Toa Metru saw each other, they realized that they were no longer the heroic Toa Metru, they were half-hero, half-beast Toa Hordika. About that time, the strange beings, Rahaga, introduced themselves and informed the Toa Hordika about what they had to do. 
Now the Toa Hordika did not only have external enemies to worry about, and the Toa Hordika had to battle their own now savage natures. Topic: <laughs> Challenge of the Hordika. Sources: Bionicle Adventures number no. 8. Online animations the Toa Hordika began their search for the best way to transport the sleeping Matoran to Mata Nui. Hounded by Vizarak, they began to locate parts for a gigantic airship to ferry the Matoran to safety. Along the way, they learned about the past, and how the Rahaga were once Toa. Toa Varkama Hordika visited Tarmetru just in time to save Norik and Garaki from three Vizarak. Garaki told him about a Mask of Light, and that he had to find the Makoki Stones. After using a spinner to bring a foundation down on the Vizarak, he went and found the Makoki stone. But suddenly a lava eel destroyed the beam. Varkama fell toward the lava, but survived because Onewa fired a spinner, causing a stone platform to rise up. Varkama told him about the Mask of Light, and Onewa went to find the second stone. Onewa ran from four Vizarak, and destroyed a bridge before they could cross it. He went into a cave and found the stone, but was caught by a blue tendril. The four Vizarak came back up and the Suikarak fired a spinner, but Onewa was saved by Fenua when he blew up the ground. Onewa reported his task, and Fenua sneaked past the Vizarak in the archives. When he got the stone, a Vizarak trap activated, the pedestal sank, a big hammer narrowly missed Fenua, and he was swept away in a flood, but just as Fenua was sent plummeting down a waterfall, Nokama rushed in to save him. When Fenua told Nokama of the Mask of Light, Nokama departed for Garmetru. She found the stone underwater, but as she surfaced, Nokama was ambushed by the Vizarak. She ran from them, only to find herself stuck in the Vizarak web. The Votaric fired a spinner at Nokama, but Nuju cut her free of the webbing, letting Nokama dodge the spinner, and defeated the Vizarak. In an unground tunnel network, Nuju and Nokama part ways, with Nokama telling Nuju that he must search for a piece of the Makoki stone in Kometru. Nuju heads to a Kometru knowledge tower to retrieve his piece of the Makoki stone. He retrieves it, but is cornered by the Vizarak on a ledge high atop the tower, hundreds of feet above the street, but Mato urged Nuju to jump off and he caught his hand, leaving the Vizarak behind. Mato hurried off to get the last Makoki stone. He was ambushed by Vizarak, but managed to escape them and made it to the Great Temple. At the Great Temple, the Toa Hordika each put their own Makoki stone in a carving of their shapes and the Mask of Light was revealed. The light emitting from it attracted the attention of Vizarak all over the Metru. The Toa Hordika fought the Vizarak for a minute and Onewa sealed the Mask of Light in a stone shell to keep the Vizarak from snatching it. Then the Toa Hordika managed to escape from the Great Temple and sealed the Vizarak in. The Toa Hordika joined their hands tools, and their journey for the Makoki Stones and the Mask of Light was over. An interesting event to note is a revelation that several of the Toa Hordika made, they were not supposed to be the Toa Metru. This fact haunted them, until they learned more. <laughs> <laughs> Web of Shadows Sources: Web of Shadows movie and its novelization. Adventures number no. nine. The Toa were starting to doubt how on earth to get the Matoran to the island of Mata Nui. Varkama walks away from their base camp in frustration and ends up nearly battling a Muaka, sending it away. It turns out that Norik was following Varkama the whole time and tried to talk Varkama out of his rage. His effort was futile, for it only enraged Varkama that much more and he ran away. Sadly, he was caught by a small squad of Vizarak who took him to the Colosseum and webbed him up. Meanwhile, Nokama is hiding at the Toa Hordika's makeshift camp. Norik shows up without Varkama and tells the other Hordika that they have to start their search for Kitongu, a mystical Rahi who can restore their former shapes. They travel to the Great Temple and look for clues as to Keating Yu's whereabouts. 
the Toa Hordika decide to stay outside of the Great Temple and guard because they feel rejected by the Great Spirit seeing as they are now half-beast. Meanwhile, Varkama is talking to Rudaka who convinces him to join her and Sidorak. It should be noted that Rudaka is not loyal at all to Sidorak and is planning to betray him. Varkama agrees to join them and goes to the Great Temple to capture all of the Rahaga except for Norik, whom he leaves to tell the other Hordika what had happened. Varkama travels to the Colosseum and speaks to Sidorak telling him that he wants to join him and the Visorak Horde. Upon seeing the captured Rahaga, Sidorak agrees and invites him inside. The other Toa Hordika travel inside the Great Temple to see what is taking the Rahaga so long. They find the Great Temple on fire and rush inside to find the Rahaga. They only find Norik who was buried under several boulders. Norik tells them that Varkama has succumbed to his Hordika side and tells that they have to find Kitongu. They must follow the trail of falling tears until they reach the sky. They realize that the tears are a small stream of liquid protodermis flowing out of the Great Temple leading to the Silver Sea. Varkama is at the Colosseum and meets Sidorak, who thanks him for turning over the Rahaga. Rudaka convinces Sidorak to let Varkama become master of his horde once they capture the other five Hordika. Sidorak agrees and introduces Varkama to the horde. The Toa Hordika and Rahaga Norik find an old chute underwater where the tears led them to that takes them to what seems like a completely new island underneath Metru Nui. They then continue to follow the tears that take them to an underground area much like Ko Metru. They find that the tears froze into a formation much like a mountain that reaches the sky. They go inside and awaken Kitongu. Having found him, they tell Kitongu why they need his help. He refuses, in a language that only Norik could interpret. He tells them that if they are to rescue Varkama, they must learn to use their new abilities, not be rid of them. He also tells them that he can't start a battle on their behalf, but he can aid those loyal to the three virtues unity, duty, and destiny. They clank fists the traditional Toa salute and go the Colosseum. Varkama is trying to master his new powers while he waits for the inevitable arrival of the other Hordika. They do come and start to converse with Varkama, trying to get back on their side. He refuses and tells them to bow to him and Sidorak. They refuse and so Varkama unleashes the Visorak on them. The preferred method of attack for both sides is to use a mechanical spinner to generate fireball analogous shots. Mato, with a plan, uses his to reach Varkama. They fight, while Mato apologizes to Varkama for his rash words, and exhorts Varkama to return to their mission. Reminded of his team's purpose, Varkama turns good again. Meanwhile, Sidorak and Rudaka are hearing a loud banging sound that keeps recurring. It turns out to be Kitongu climbing up the Colosseum trying to reach them. Sidorak takes out his herding blade and shoots energy at Kitongu. He misses three times until Rudaka decides to take matters into her own hands and hits Kitongu, sending him plummeting down to the Colosseum grounds. However, in part of her plan to betray Sidorak, she only weakens Kitongu. She convinces Sidorak to go down to see if Kitongu is dead, he isn't, so Sidorak gives Rudaka the honor of the last blow. She refuses and betrays him. Sidorak, who had entertained a desire to make Rudaka his queen, is puzzled and scared by this, for though he was powerful, he knew he couldn't beat Kitongu by himself. Kitongu, using his bare hands, smashes Sidorak. Rudaka confronts the Toa Hordika and the freed Rahaga. She tells them that she wants their elemental powers. Arriving to complete her list thereof, Varkama throws Mato with the other Hordika and Rudaka continues to talk about her need for their powers. Mato and the others except Varkama shoot their spinners at Rudaka and she begins to glow. She explains that their powers are nothing if they are not united. Varkama stops pretending to serve her and begins to aim his spinner at her. She explains that if Varkama kills her, the Visorak will kill him and his friends. Having already thought about this, Varkama reminds her that she convinced Sidorak to put him in charge of them. He tells them that they are free. 
The Visarak ponder this for only a moment and then abandon Rudaka. Varkama shoots his spinner and strikes her. At once, Makuta's shadowy hand takes her. As she vanished, her heart stone fell onto the ground. It turned out that her heart stone was a piece of the seal that the Toa Metru had encased Makuta in. In striking it with their combined powers, they shattered the seal. They decide that they have to worry about getting the Matoran to safety before they worry about Makuta. They build six airships and load the Matoran, Great and Noble Kanohi, and other things into them. The Toa Metru say farewell to the Rahaga and Kitongu and begin their journey to Mata Nui. Topic: <laughs> Time Trap. Source: Bionicle Adventures number no. 10. We begin when the Matoran reached the shore of Metru Nui. Everything is ready. A great weariness overtakes Taraga Varkama as a story that had not been told not even the other Taraga knew about it comes back. Chapter 1 begins with all of the Toa making their way to Mata Nui. Their Varkama tells them that he needs to go back to get the Mask of Time. He tells the others to continue their journey and then he jumps out of the ship and makes his way back to Metru Nui. Once he gets the Kanohi Vahi, a water spout hits him. He crashes into solid rock and stuns himself. Then from out of the shadows a figure appears and takes the mask from Varkama, and then the Toa Metru falls back to the water. Then we go to a new world. A world where the Dark Hunters live. The Shadowed One is making plans to go back to Metru Nui because of the death of Nidiki and Kreka. He leaves Lariska in charge of the island. Varkama finds himself back in Matoran form. He is back in his house, in an alternate time, when Metru Nui is safe. The Toa of Prophecy, Visola, Nari, Tehuti, Ihaya, Orkam and Akmu have turned Metru Nui upside down. Varkama thinks that is the mask of time that is doing all this. Then, he goes looking for his fellow Toa who are also Matoran, but none of them remember anything. Onewa was a coward and Mato had died in a shoot accident. Then Varkama goes to Makuta's lair with Nokama. On the way, the Morbuzik attack him. Luckily, he escaped. And when he reaches the Dark One's lair, the creature that looks like a hybrid of Akrana and Akrata clings itself to his mask, showing him Krakua, Toa of Sonics. Krakua tells Varkama that six Toa are going to make a perilous quest into the darkest place he could imagine in order for Krakua to exist. But before the Toa could finish, the creature was pulled off Varkama's face by Taraga Lakan. Then Varkama gets an idea. Varkama hurls a disc at Nokama's head, and it passes right through. It is then that Varkama finds out that he has not gone back in time but that it is all an illusion an illusion put in place by Makuta. Nokama was really a Visarak Bogarak, and Lakan was really Makuta. Now Varkama was really what he was, a Toa of Fire. They have a little fight and Varkama tells Makuta that Voparak has the Mask of Time. This forces the Toa of Fire and the Master of Shadows to work together to retrieve the most powerful mask of all time. The two most unlikely allies found out that Voparak does not have the mask any longer, so Makuta sends his army of Rashi to deal with the creature while they slip away. They make their way to the Great Temple to find the Shadowed One. Makuta tells Varkama that he should go inside and spy on them, and that he has unfinished business to take care of. Then Makuta proclaims, You can come out now, and Kitongu comes out from the shadows. Inside the Great Temple, Varkama and Centric the Shadowed One's bodyguard are locked in battle, and outside, Makuta and Kitongu are in battle as well. Makuta's winning and so is Centric. Makuta is about to kill Kitongu when the whole temple explodes, sending all four into space. Varkama had won his battle. He sees Kitongu, who is not moving. He started to check on Kitongu, when his body is chained by solid protodermis. The Shadowed One had arrived. The Shadowed One tells Varkama that he and the others will pay for killing his Dark Hunters. Then Makuta joins in. 
He claims he will hand over Varkama to the Shadowed One, if he returns the Vahi. The Shadowed One says that he would not do that. Varkama needed to pay for what he did. Then Varkama frees himself and tells the Shadowed One that Makuta was the one to kill Nidiki and Kreka, after which the pair of powerful beings begin their fight. The Shadowed One's eye beams destroyed much of Makuta's chest plate and all of his wings, which is why he doesn't have them in the Bionicle Chronicles series. Varkama saw his moment and took the Mask of Time from the Shadowed One. The Shadowed One shot a laser at Varkama's jetpack, which sent him falling to his death. The Shadowed One wanted to head after the fallen Toa but Makuta threw him at the fallen Voparak. The Toa of Fire fell into darkness. But he was not dead. Varkama found himself in the lair of the plant creature Karzani. Karzani then told Varkama that it was because of the Toa that he was still alive. When they placed parts of his body into liquid protodermis, a tiny green shoot grew from it. In time, it regrew into the Karzani which had the memories of old. He and Makuta have been working together. He had agreed to play the part of the Morbuzik to make Makuta's false world more convincing. There was nothing that Varkama could do. He was not destined to be a Toa and couldn't fight Makuta. Yet one question remained unanswered. Makuta said he had chosen the most stubborn and strong willed Matoran he could think of to be Toa. However, who planted Varkama and the others' names in Makuta's mind? Now Karzani revealed the truth Varkama and the others were really meant to become Toa. Mata Nui knew that Makuta would read the stars and try to thwart his will. And so, Mata Nui had changed the names of the stars into those who knew the locations of the Great Disc and placed the real names into Makuta. Varkama then asks about the disc and all other evidence that pointed towards another fate. Karzani said that while Makuta has his brotherhood, Mata Nui has his own helpers. Varkama is about to ask how Karzani knew all this, when Karzani mentions a member from an organization of Mata Nui probably the Order of Mata Nui ran into him in his caves before his ultimate demise. But at that moment Makuta enters the cave and destroys the Karzani. Varkama starts to run. In Ta Metru, Varkama threatened to destroy the Mask of Time so Makuta couldn't get his hands on it. Once the mask is destroyed, all of reality would be undone. But Varkama made a deal with Makuta to allow him to leave with the mask unharmed and to leave the Matoran, Kitongu, Turijdum and the Rahaga in peace. Makuta was outraged. He didn't want to sulk in the darkness doing nothing. But wishing to save his own life and knowing that he could always take the mask back another time, he granted Varkama this wish but said he would return a year later. Varkama then found himself in a tunnel that lead up to the surface. He swore one day the Matoran would return to Metru Nui. Makuta comes upon the place where the last Matoran capsule laid. He reawakened the Matoran Akmu and spread his tale of lies on the brainwashed Matoran. The boats reach Metru Nui and the Matoran were greeted by Taraga Dume and the Rahaga. Varkama thought to himself, a thousand years ago, he returned to Mata Nui and told his fellow Toa about the evidence that they were really meant to be heroes. As for the events that happened in the city and the parts he had been in, he said nothing. Makuta had been true to his word. One year later, Makuta had attempted to cast their new world and all who would call it home into everlasting shadow. Despite that it took 999 years and a new team of Toa, the light had shown the way. The city of legends belonged to the Matoran once more. And no one, not the Brotherhood of Makuta, the Dark Hunters or anyone will ever take it away from them. Together, they will make new legends. <laughs>